So raise your hand if you were blessed with a slow metabolism like me. And I say that in gist. Um, it's definitely not a blessing for multiple reasons. And one of those reasons being that it could disrupt your sleep. Yes, I know. We usually think the reason why we're not sleeping is because we have poor hygiene or stress in our lives. And yes, those are definitely drivers of sleep issues. However, what I like to talk about on my blog is the lesser known reasons behind sleep difficulties. Because let's face it, if you're having a hard time sleeping, you're likely trying to reduce your mental emotional stress as well as improve your sleep hygiene and you may not be seeing the results that you desire. So that's what I'm going to talk about today is one of those lesser known reasons behind insomnia and that is having a slow oxidation rate. Let's start off by talking about what it means to have a slow metabolism or oxidation rate. I'm going to use those two terms interchangeably, slow oxidation rate and slow metabolism, because they basically mean the same thing. And that is that um, on a very simple level, that your body takes food and converts it into energy slowly. Now, from a functional health perspective, what that also means is that your thyroid activity as well as your adrenal activity is slow. So as a result, you typically have a hard time retaining sodium and potassium and you displace magnesium and calcium. So I'm going to discuss in a little bit more detail what that means and what that has to do with your sleep. Knowing a client's oxidation rate is really helpful to me as a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. And I do this by way of the HTMA, also known as the hair tissue mineral analysis. If you're not familiar with the test, it is where we take about a fourth of an inch of scalp hair from a couple places on your head, we send it to a lab and they analyze the mineral content. And this then allows us to see if you have deficiencies imbalances, if you're holding on to toxic metals, as well as determine your oxidation rate. So when I'm interpreting an HTMA, one main thing that I am looking at are the first four main minerals. And what I want to see is I want them to be balanced. And those first four main minerals are magnesium, calcium, potassium, and sodium. And what I see with our slow oxidizers is that magnesium and calcium is high. Now, that doesn't mean that they have high levels of magnesium and calcium. It means that magnesium and calcium is in the soft tissue. And that's not where, where it should be. Magnesium should be in our cell, and then calcium should be in our teeth and our bones. And the other thing I see is that sodium and potassium are low. So the client isn't retaining those minerals. And that could be a problem. And that is typically why they have slow oxidation is because sodium and potassium are solvents. They help the body to utilize our other minerals. So then this results in the buildup of magnesium and calcium in our soft tissues and can cause sleep issues. Let's first take a look at why high calcium levels in the soft tissue can make it challenging for you to sleep. So the cool thing about calcium is that not only does it help to keep our bones and teeth strong, but it also can help to protect us emotionally when it comes to trauma. Calcium is a very calming mineral. So when we experience an extremely stressful event, our bodies will retain calcium so that we feel more numb. And that could be one reason why you are in a slow state of oxidation is because of past trauma that has gone unresolved. So it's really important that you work on resolving your trauma. So your body will then place your calcium in your bone and teeth where it belongs. Because if you build up what we call a calcium shell, you're going to feel disconnected. You're going to have um, symptoms of anxiety and depression. And then those mental conditions will then exacerbate or cause sleep issues. Let's talk about magnesium now. My slow oxidizers, when they see their magnesium levels on an HTMA, they typically think that means that they have high levels of magnesium. 
Well, actually what it really means is that they're losing magnesium. Magnesium is not entering the cell where that's where we want it to be because of the slow retention of sodium and potassium. And as a result, it's being dumped into the soft tissue. And that's not a good thing when it comes to sleep. We need appropriate levels of magnesium in order to calm our central nervous system, our brains, and our body. And what makes it even more challenging to be in the slow rate of oxidation is that we're typically not consuming enough magnesium to begin with. Research shows that 50% of us are not meeting the daily recommended amount of magnesium through our diet alone. Magnesium is so important for your sleep that I actually have a whole YouTube dedicated to the subject. If you're interested in learning more, check that out. But for the time being, I'm gonna give you a high level overview as to why magnesium deficiency can lead to sleep issues. So reason number one is because magnesium helps promote the production of GABA. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter that um, binds to receptors in our brains and inhibits brain function and wakefulness. Therefore, we need sufficient levels of GABA in order to sleep. So you can see why a magnesium deficiency then can lead to a reduction in GABA and sleep problems. Secondly, magnesium is really important for blood sugar regulation, which is important for sleep. A lot of my clients are waking up in the middle of the night because their blood sugar is bottoming, bottoming out at three o'clock in the morning. And so then what happens is their body then produces cortisol to bring up their blood sugar, then that triggers a wake up. As you can see, it's best not to have a slow rate of metabolism. And you're probably now wondering, how can I avoid that? Well, number one, make sure that you're managing your mental and emotional stress. See a therapist, do some tapping, deep breathing exercise, mindfulness, manage your schedule, make sure you're not overworking, go outside, enjoy nature. All of those things are gonna help you to break up that calcium shell. Secondly, make sure that you're eating enough complex carbohydrates in the form of vegetables and healthy grains. What that's gonna do, it's going to help to speed up your metabolism. But don't forget to also eat protein and a little bit of fat because a low protein diet can also contribute to slow oxidation. Thirdly, make sure you're eating food that is high in magnesium, potassium, and sodium. Now for sodium, the best thing to do is just put a little pinch of sea salt in a glass of water every day. You don't wanna overdo it with sodium, but you definitely wanna make sure you're getting enough. And when it comes to potassium, it's really hard to overdo it because our bodies need a ton of potassium. And foods that are a good source of potassium include celery juice, coconut water, hemp seeds, and bananas. And last but not least, make sure you're eating foods that are rich in magnesium. Foods that have a lot of magnesium include avocados, bananas, spinach, and my favorite, dark chocolate. So I bet you if we were talking right now, your next question for me would be, should you purchase magnesium, potassium, and sodium supplements? Well, if I had an HTMA for you, and I could confirm that you are indeed a slow oxidizer, I would say absolutely. However, without that data, I would caution you against taking supplements willy-nilly because you can actually make things worse. So say you're taking magnesium without sodium and potassium and you are a slow oxidizer, what's gonna happen is just more magnesium is gonna build up in your soft tissue and it's gonna further slow your oxidation rates. Also, if you are a fast oxidizer, and you start to supplement with sodium and potassium, you are gonna speed up your oxidation rates. And that can lead to sleep issues too, which I'm gonna to touch on in next week's vlog. And this is why for all of my clients, regardless of the package that they decide to purchase, I run an HTMA. It is such an eye-opening test there's so much we can do with it, and we can make sure that they're taking these foundational supplements in the right manner. If you're interested in learning more about my sleep programs, you should set up a free 20-minute discovery call. You can do that on my website, Kelly Murray Adult Sleep.